people are always looking for like a reason to put you into a box mm. and to put limitations on you because of that and many people who have any type of thing that makes them diverse in any type of way we learn to almost put up a barrier or armor or ha- try to hide it or whatever it is so that we don't get things taken away from us before yeah. we get the chance and it's um it's a survival strategy when did dream nation like in tw- i know 2013 yeah the creation how did you manage the 20 people I okay get you haven't there. even got to that yet yeah okay. i want to i want to so, i want us to get there <laughs> so. all right then so dream nation um the first person that um actually the two people that came on board first for dream nation one is a lady called iris um she actually did her placement year with us oh, wow. um so yeah she was like i've seen what she was a student at love for us was like I saw what you did with um, Starlight Imagery, Creative Circle, etc. Like, I want to just jump into entrepreneurship. So mm. do you mind if I do my, my placement year? That was a hella, hella scary decision. A placement year? Yeah, and I was scared to do it. But I was just wow. like, you know what? Let's do this. Like, it was, let's see if it works. Like, and if you believe in me that much, then... But somebody's yeah. doing a placement with you? That yeah. is surreal. But I think this kind of goes back to, I think, maybe a lesson that I hadn't actually touched on yet, and that's your reputation. So remember she's a student at Loughborough so she had seen like the transformation that I did of the ACS Mm. she saw the legacy of the ACS she saw all the awards that we were winning like because we were we had become like one of the universities like poster childs for entrepreneurship at this point we'd got investment from them we got this we were in like marketing campaigns so we were like really up there um and just a few other things that I was doing and involved in so she saw essentially my character and my potential Mm. and I think that's what she bet on rather okay. than betting on actually what I was doing at the time. I get you. Um, hopefully it was a good choice for her, um, but I'll let her talk for herself <laughs> on that. Uh, so she came on board and then there was another lady who had attended my first event that I organised, mm. um, Toby Rachel Ballet. Okay, yeah, Toby. Um, yeah, that is... So she um, then came on to be our editor-in-chief, even though we didn't have any type of content at the time. But I thought, okay, cool, let's do this. Um, and the as you guys probably know, Toby's now like one of my closest friends. Mm-hmm. Like I literally think of her as family. Yeah. Um, in fact, we refer to each other as cousins. Um, yeah, that really threw me off <laughs> initially. You were like, oh, my cousin. I was like... Dude, it's The I'm reason so we confused. had to do that is because, apart from the fact that we basically are family now, but um, it's also because we because we were so close, people we always think we're dating. I got you. So it's like, okay, like if you think she's my cousin, then that solves all the issues. Although Toby and Iris had joined the team, um, I still was doing the vast majority of the work. And that wasn't because of a lack of their willingness or ability. That was because I just had this whole founder thing of like, oh, it's faster for me to do it myself or mm. easier, this and that. So I was just going through, going through, going through. Um, and then we got to me organising this gala. Um, I was out of my depth. I've never done anything like that before. Um, people saw Dream Nation as being this amazing, massive thing as well. So then there were all these high expectations. Um, and at the time, I then also had two really big personal things that happened. Mm. Um, both of my grandmothers died within a two month period of each other. Mm. Um, like, so that was, and that was within the same periods that the gala was taking place as well. So then that massively like threw me off. Mm. Uh, like my, they, my relationship with my grandmothers were really close. Um, they both basically raised me in their own ways. And I'd say a lot of like, who I am is because of the what they they put in me essentially Mm. so it was definitely a big loss um and I just between the the stress of organizing a gala between the stress of one of them passing away suddenly and the other one like slowly deteriorating over that time period um because of cancer unfortunately uh it was just so 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 stressful and then Mm. you then throw in the the financial difficulty of organizing a gala. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, by the time I got to, uh, by the time I got to the day of it, I was a mess. Um, I remember I was having panic attacks on the nights beforehand. Like I was like, tea tickets aren't selling. I haven't sorted out this yet. I haven't sorted out that, etc. I would say the first gala we organized, in my opinion, was a mess. Um, people enjoyed Seriously? it. I, 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 feel, I believe I was there as, yeah. as well. I don't think it was a mess. The first it was one. Good. The first Wait, one. Wait, was it in... Um, 
North London type of North East. Type. Yeah, this was uh, the location I'm forgetting now, but it's not the one that was. It's, it's not the one that because there's one that was like no you know what you didn't come to the I first did, one I didn't come no to the you first didn't come one. to the first okay, one okay. I know for sure actually um, you would know it was in my opinion it was a mess um, the only saving grace is what actually became a dream nation tradition was like I said to myself there's so many things I haven't delivered on but if I give people free rum punch the whole night Screaming. then that will at least cover a lot of problems and it yeah. did <laughs> so that <laughs> so that's the reason why whenever we do like galas and a lot of things I do for Dream Nation there's normally free rum punch throughout the whole night like that's this is tradition from there um, and I remember like I remember after the event I was so down because actually my grandmother ended up passing away literally the very next day so we went up to Birmingham like the gala was done we all went home, I got dressed, we drove up to Birmingham, then the next day, literally, I, I watched my grandmother pass away. So, like, during that time period, over Christmas as well, I was just like, yeah, I'm just done. This was too hard. Um, I didn't get the support that I needed. Like, people didn't buy tickets the way that they that said they were going to. Mm. Um, and I felt, like, really embarrassed. That's like, I was like, this reputation I spent all these years building up, I felt like I ruined it in that moment with mm. what, to me, felt like a terrible event. But then something a bit mad happened, um, which is there was a picture from that gala that went ridiculously viral, um, uh -oh. like ridiculously viral. Um, what happened? What was in the picture? So it was, I think maybe about seven or eight of the girls that I attended. Mm -hmm. um, they took that just really cool picture, like of them being kind of silly, but looking outstanding because they're all like I think their, I remember this picture. A, a lot of people don't actually know that's where it came from. But yeah, like... Oh. So they were all looking great because they're all in their like gala clothes, yeah, etc. Yeah. But they were like pulling like gang signs and faces, etc. Yeah. And the caption was something like like two doctors, one dentist, yes, like two remember, something like that. Like just naming all the things they're doing. Yeah. And I think it was just like a moment that showed people that you can be excellent um, mm. and you can also still have personality and enjoy yourself. Yeah. And also, I think at the time there wasn't that many like examples because they were all all the people in that picture were black. There weren't many examples of like positive like mm -hmm. things of that nature. So it's like you can be successful, you can be black, and you can still enjoy yourself. I think that's that. You're right. I didn't come to the first gala. Mm -hmm. I saw that picture, and it made me want to go. That's exactly what happened. It to made everybody. me want to go. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So that was when Dream Nation like multiplied in in its um, popularity and awareness. Yeah. Because um, yeah, we had people from America email me, be like, "Yo, when you come and bring this out here, like <laughs> that." Yeah, it was it was crazy. Because I'd at this point I'd already given up. I was like, I'm not coming back to. I'm not doing the discrimination thing anymore. Like, let me go back to doing my media stuff. It was safe. It was like not distressful, etc. And then, um, yeah, this picture went viral, and I just saw just how much of an impact it had on people. Like, it just felt like it just uplifted people so much. Mm. Um, and I was like, all right, you know what? Let me rededicate myself to making this work. Hey guys, I just want to let you know that on November the 24th, 2023, we will be hosting our first workshop of the year. It's gonna be focused on helping you to become a board member. For more information, visit the Dream Nation website at dreamnation.co. That's dreamnation.co. And I realized the first mistake I had done was I tried to carry it all on my back um, by myself. Mm. So I called a meeting with Iris and Toby um, I remember we met in like the basement of some pub, um, the Star of Kings actually, Dustin King's course. Um, and we just like sat there for hours, this kind of discussion. And I think letting go of that control um, and having that humility really changed the, the dynamic of, I guess, how involved they felt with the, with the mission. And the next thing we've then realized is that if we want to bring this thing to a level that can like hopefully impact the world, we're going to need a team mm. so at that point we laid out like all the different roles that we needed and we started to think about who do we know in different networks that can do all these positions yeah. and we just went out and recruited and then we got to about 10 people i think at first um we used that team of 10 to do the next dream nation conference and that was just amazing in fact this was now i think for yeah this is now 2015 or 2016 yeah, because you had a conference and yeah. then you had and you had a gala, right? Yes. And I think I remember seeing the conference and it was 
like I remember seeing it on your website and it was all sold out. Yeah. And I was so annoyed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I kept missing, I kept missing, like, yeah, because yeah. you had a few days. A few, yeah, like um, a bit. But solid. Yeah. So 2015, now that I had a set of people that I'd let actually just commit themselves to this vision, mm. um, really get involved, et cetera, uh, yeah, blew up. Yeah. Um, everything was a million times better than what I was doing when I was doing it by myself. Like the quality was up there, the impact was up there, the mm. growth, the hype, etc. And I think from that, it just kept on attracting more and more people that I said, that's when I first started paying people to then be part of my team. Mm. Um, they joined full time at the time. Wow. Um, they were not on full time salaries. Yeah, but, um, they, but, but yeah, yeah, like they were that committed to the, um, the vision. Um, and then because they had made such a commitment, I actually went on to make them co-founders as mm. well in that regard. Um, you have to also think about the, the time, uh, like how old you were at the time and people's people were more willing to do things take a risk, and yeah. to take a risk um because they didn't have that much financial responsibility no. as well so you, yes and no so we didn't have anywhere near as much as we have now yeah so there's no way that <laughs> like people now. like in their late <laughs> 20s and 30s can be doing what we was doing then yeah. no chance but that doesn't mean it was easy mm. um it was Everybody that had come on board to do that, they were turning away significant money because they were very talented people, very talented. They could have got much better jobs elsewhere without mm. any doubt. The thing what kept them there, I guess, was one, the vision, like they believed in it themselves, mm. but then also two of them being involved my leadership. So those two things together come then on. attract <laughs> people. Well, it's like I said earlier, I was like, if you don't own it, and then it's like people can't latch onto it. Yeah. So because I owned it, it gave people something to anchor into as well. And then we just kept slowly growing from mm. there to there until before I knew we got to 20. Um, but the Ooh. the 20, um, 20... 20 is a lot. It is a lot. It was too much because I had... I guess because there was so much going on, um, I had kind of forgotten some of the lessons I learned earlier. And I was just accepting a lot of people onto the team mm. and then not really also paying attention to how much they were committed to what it is I was doing. So Because yeah. everyone's excited, it's Dream Nation. Yeah. Like to be a part of the team is like, oh my God. Like yeah. so they might but they're not actually all pulling their weight. Yeah. But it's the recognition. Hundred percent. Um recognition opportunities. Opportunities like, that it will I'd open up for them. It yeah. Definitely almost everybody that was part of the team went on to get something better as a consequence of being there. I also write really good references as well. <laughs> um so yeah and but yeah it was definitely a mistake in terms of the way that I handled leadership at that time. Um and it's the reason why I ultimately had to have a hard reset, stop everything and go back down to one. So yeah, like I went back down to just myself. I really had to go back to basics and think about what is it that I'm really trying to accomplish. But also at this time, how do I build a sustainable business? Like mm. not on this hype, not just on energy, but something that's going to make a real impact and be able to last. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was uh, I guess, the story of how we went from that to 20, but never back down to one again. And now, and now you have three. And now I've got three. In- yeah. Including me. I'm <laughs> rhyming a lot. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that sounds really good. I think being a leader as a founder, there is a real like sense of like responsibility and this level of pressure. You are the person that they turn to and even though yeah it's great to like get ideas from the team ultimately you're the decision maker so you yeah. have to have that confidence in like what you're saying because they look to you to set the mission set the vision yeah um so that i found hard sometimes because also i'm a very like sociable build up my batteries from like being around other people and i've never been good in my own company like i just love hearing other people's opinions and working on things together and very much a team player not it's not even unlearning that but trying to step away from that a little bit and make my own decisions as a leader yeah. has been something to adjust to and get comfortable with okay so you are quite open to talk about the fact that you're dyslexic mm -hmm. and how that impacts your way of working and yeah. the adjustments that you've made in your life to be able to still be um to work to the the best possible capability you can mm. um i'm sure there are plenty of uh, other people who have we all have something how how did you first of all how did you like acknowledge um that there was a level of limitation in certain way that you may have to and turn that around into a 
a positive I don't want to say positive but you know what I mean like yeah. a like working for your to your advantage I'm gonna say for me I was very blessed and very lucky when it came to dyslexia because I was diagnosed very young um mm. I think I was I was definitely in, in primary school um so we're talking maybe like six to seven sort wow. of so very young when I found out uh it helps because uh yeah like it meant that it put everything into context so a lot of people when they get they get the diagnosis at a later age in life whether it's dyslexia or ADHD or whatever they're like oh that explains the last however many years of my life um whereas for me I always like went into every situation understanding this is the way that my brain is wired it's different to everybody else so if you want to succeed take a different pathway and I've just lived with that reality so it's always been fine for me um and I think with that could it without a doubt I, I do say it in terms of like oh yeah it's like the superpower it's ever like it does come with advantages it means I def my brain is wired differently I think differently I'm naturally more innovative mm -hmm. it's that simple however my brain is wired differently I think differently so therefore things that are standard to most people yeah. are not standard to me yeah um it's a, it's a double-edged sword in that regard and because of, I guess, my practical mentality and the confidence that's been instilled in me, I'm more focused on, all right, if I have, if I can't do it the way that everyone else does, then let's find a way that works for me. So one of the most important uh, hires in my life, in fact, like you said, when I went back down to one, the first person I hired was an admin. Um, so my PA, Shanna, um, she is literally like, I cannot... She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, <laughs> but I promise you, there would be no Claude Williams if there was no Shanna. Wow. You would not know who I am. Like, because part of the reason, like, stuff like Dream Nation failed and fell apart the first time was because I was not handling my admin correctly. Mm. It's that simple. I was missing out on stuff. I remember we had, like, stupid fines from the um, HMRC for just not submitting our um, account and stuff. It's just like, why why yeah. like it's not needed and i say stupid i mean we're talking thousands and Yikes. and we didn't i don't think we even owed the money you were just getting fines just because we didn't submit. late late submissions <laughs> yeah. um, we've been there <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah so i've now really just embraced what am i good at what am i bad at and mm. now just get people to feel my weaknesses mm. it's that simple um like even so ever see you as my producer you already know like i leave a, almost all admin to you mm -hmm. i leave obviously a lot of the creative side mm -hmm. but also i leave um the administrative of actually booking guests like getting that stuff organized yeah. handling emails and stuff because like i know i'm bad at it and i'll i'll get in your way in doing so so i'll let you be great at that and i'll be great at the things that i have to handle mm. simple as and i think embracing your strengths and your weaknesses and really leaning into them is one of the best things you can do mm. um without a doubt you can't always run away from your weaknesses i've also become much better at admin and organization and stuff like that um just within myself because if i want to get to a certain level of greatness that's yeah. required yeah but i also know that there is a limit to that so i'll get to my potential that limit and i'll then let other people carry it to another mm. level from there mm. and and that it within leadership how have you approached even the people that you're working with in like i think brutal honesty mm. so i i accept my i accept my strengths i accept my weaknesses mm. um and i embrace them and i don't hide them so you you probably want probably one of the first conversations you would have had with me is i'm dyslexic i am not good at this mm. or x or y or z mm. in fact even before we even had a conversation if i emailed you first you would see it in the email so yeah because i'm so open about it a it, it's never a weapon that can be used against me first and foremost but b it then this means that we can have just honest conversations um why when, do you think people are afraid to to share especially in business as like an entrepreneur and yeah. as a leader like I think the reality is is that there's so much stigma, not not just around dyslexia, but just around anything. Mm. People are so quick to so quick to judge people. We're so quick to find people's weaknesses, to judge people, to make assumptions around people. Um, and that can be like your neurodiversity, it could be a disability, it could be your race, it could be your gender, your sexuality, whatever. Like mm. people are always looking for like um, it's like a reason to put you into a box mm. and put limitations on you because of that and many people who have 
any type of thing that makes them diverse in any type of way we learn to almost put up a barrier or armor or ha- try to hide it or whatever it is so that we don't get things taken away from us before yeah. we get the chance and it's um it's a survival strategy like i'm not going to sit here and tell you that like everybody is accepting of all these things like they're not i still have plenty of people that will still complain about stuff when they see see a typo and if when i write something on social online and i'm sure there's many many more people who, who will never say it to me or who will never say it publicly but like they've made assumptions about my intelligence because of the frequency of my typos mm. i'm very sure that's a thing mm. um i'm even sure not even not even sure like i've experienced i remember when like one time i went to a job interview and like they um they gave me like a, a written task to do or something like that so those that know me know that i don't handle paper I just i refuse i will type it up um just and that's a dyslexic thing for me like that's one way that typing helps me to solve most of my dyslexia issues but they they forced me to do this written like type of thing and then they judged me then on like the speed of my the speed of my my writing and the um the typos and grammar mistakes wow. and i'm just like this is irrelevant to the job that you're hiring me to but like and then i realized i'm not even i know that's probably even breaking the law if i'm honest with you like i could probably see them but it's not that deep but in my head i was just like this does they still live in a world where they're judging people by things that don't matter mm. um and as a result they lost they literally just pushed out one of the potential best hires they could have made um, because of their backwards thinking mm. but so much of the world still operates in that way where they'll see your weaknesses they'll see the things you're bad at or they'll see your limitations and then they'll ignore all of the massive range of strengths that you bring to the table so yeah like there's a valid reason for people to oftentimes keep it to themselves mm. and like as a like you've mentioned that company but as a leader yourself when you're hiring people and you're looking at people how how do you make that decision that outside of all these other things that is like blatantly could become you know could cause some type of delay or stuff like that um this person is still the right person for the team or i'm going to take a chance on them like how how do you make that decision i think it's natural to me because like i have the empathy for it because Mm. i've i've been there i've lived it and i'm still living it like i like i said i've still will be judged for opportunities right now based Mm. on a number of factors out of my control so like the way i see it it's like can you do the job that i need you to do Mm. and can you do it well that's it I, I literally do not care about any other thing you've got going on. Like, if you can do this well um, and you're not going to be disruptive to stuff like the culture that I'm trying to create and mm. stuff like that, like your heart and character's in the right place, then yeah, no, I'll work with that. It's cool. Like, if you need to, if you happen to do all of your work at 3am in the morning, did the job get done? <laughs> all right, cool. It's not a problem. Yeah. Like, do you have five full-time jobs? Did you do, do, you do the work Scream, I need to do? Screaming. <laughs> like, I don't, I as long as you do the care. work, that's, that's, that's really simple it. As. Okay, no, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah, you've made me think about something because a lot of people say that I, the way I speak is very clear and very simple words, but it's because that's how I, I can struggle sometimes to formulate things in my head. And it just, it's easier for me to just like use the most simple mm-hmm. words. Yeah. And, and so I've looked at that as like a, a, um, a negative thing. But then, like, uh, later on in life, people are like, oh, you speak so clearly. I can understand everything you say. And mm. it's like, oh, okay. So it actually is a, like, some people will see that as a, po- a positive thing. It's not, yeah. yeah. So you, you just made me think about that. And it's like, yeah, so I, I don't I, be too hard I on didn't, didn't even notice it. Yeah, no, seriously. No, I've never noticed it. Wow. Do you know what I notice? What do you notice? That you're a flipping amazing producer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like, you see, yeah. That's, I literally, that's all I care about. Like, yeah. do you do that well? Are you happy? Do you, mm. do you have the right culture? Yeah. Um, then yeah, that's, if you do, then I, then how much you cost? Then that's, <laughs> that's the only other question I need to know. Yeah, no, I hear that. That's cool. But yeah, this has been really lovely and it's, um, I'm excited to, for us to do this every so often um, based on the type of guests and the themes that we keep seeing popping up just mm-hmm. to get to know you more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because you're a great, you're, you're a great listener and you give, you give, the guest I think as an interviewer you have to give the guest the space to talk yeah um but you as an entity 
by yourself, you need the space to talk I, and for us to learn so more about you. So, and yeah. Yeah, lovely. like hopefully I will follow the advice or your instructions. Now, <laughs> over time, I will become a better interviewer or host. And with that, begin to input more in the conversations. Like I'm aware that when you guys do watch the current interviews that yeah. I'm very silent. Um, I, you're not silent because you're engaged. Mm. But it's, I mean, we have a lot of, we have a lot of, we're, we're, we're picking people who got stories to tell, do, you yeah, know. So it is, it is what it is. But, mm. you know, yeah, we'll definitely... We'll get there. Get I'll, there. I'll become a better host over time. That's the goal. Yeah, we have to continuously excel. So that's it. <laughs> but yeah, this has been lovely. I've cool. really enjoyed this. I, ha, have you enjoyed it? Hundred oh, okay. percent. Yeah. Is there anything to the next you wanted time. to say about leadership that we haven't actually said? We have um, like a, a few, like two minutes. Uh, well, it's been an hour now. Oh, and an hour on the on the. Wow, okay. I think let's just leave it there. Yeah? Okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. <laughs> All right, then. Bye. I mean, <laughs> see, see you on the other side. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. Cool. How you feeling? Good. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Get you ready, because we got an, an, another recording in a few hours. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.